Hi, this is the Black Bear Prepper, and I wanted to talk to you about something that I'm really excited about, um, and I've always been really excited about. Lighters and igniters type deals for cooking, lighting fires, things like that. One of the most important things I think we carry on us when we're into the backwoods. You know, I call them cheater sticks. You know, you can have 500 matches or you can have one good lighter that works really, really well. So we want to talk a little bit about, one, some antiques, some new stuff that's out there, what are some disadvantages, different types of fuel. We're going to be talking about the isobutane propane mixes, butane type lighters, liquid fueled lighters, American made and Austrian made. We're going to also be talking about some um, sparkers, which are something, and a little bit about some of the fuels they all take. So I kind of want to start with... Um, the simple, easy, everyday carry guys. This is your big type lighters, which are a butane lighter. Uh, butane lighters are great for a few reasons. One, they're very reliable above 35 degrees. Okay, so this lighter right here, very simple, easy. You know, your standard flame, but they get blown out really easy. So not a good thing that I like for the backwoods, but for your everyday lighting things like cigarettes where they're up above you, they work very well. And the problem with them is, is when you try to turn them over on their side. Now this one, these actually do pretty reasonable because there is pressure in them. And they do reasonable for that. And they do light. But here's the problem. Where's your thumb at? Your thumb is right up against the flame. So if you're trying to light a stove or anything like that, you basically got to put your thumb in the way. Now, the next step would be a windproof lighter, and this is a Helios by Brunton, a lighter I've carried for years and years and years, really like adjustable flame, fairly water resistant, again, very poor at anything, and even worse than I think the Bix for cold weather use. They do not work in the snow, but you're dealing with a wind that literally 70 mile an hour winds and this flame stays lit. I've lit it driving down the highway at 65 miles an hour. The other nice thing about these guys, they have nice little windows on them that tell you how much fuel is left in them. And most of your Bix, if you pick the lighter colors and hold them up to the light, you can kind of pick out how much le is left in the, in the item. So something to think about. This one also has an adjustment that adjusts the fluid up and down. Again, biggest problem I have with them is when I hit my button here, it's great. I can tilt it all the way over, and I can light a stove or a you know pipe, whatever you're trying to light. But as soon as I let off the button, it goes out. So an advantage in the idea that it is very, very windproof. These are literally almost, I would consider, windproof. Then you, uh, you are fairly water resistant when they're locked down properly. The biggest problem I have with the Bix is this little button right here. I've had these go off, packing them in my pack, had it depressed all the way down, leaked all the gas out while I was on the hike up. When I went to use it when I got there, didn't work. So that, it, uh, it, you know, that is very susceptible. So what I've done is I've actually put little screens on here and taped them on for when I'm putting them in my kit. And what's great about these is you can bring 15 of them with you for $10. A lighter like this, the cheap ones, 25 bucks. This happens to be an $80 lighter. I feel it's well worth it for your standard everyday use carrying with you because they don't go bad. That is a real problem on the lighters we're going to talk to you about next is that these guys I could throw in a survival kit or this one and five years later come back and the fluid is going to be just as full as it was the day I threw it in there. So very excited about that. That is a huge, huge benefit for go bags, things like that. These do work very well. Backed up by matches if you're in cold weather. You have to have these. But these are cheater sticks. You know, like I always tell everybody, this is a cheater stick, meaning that you can light it. You know, I can light a fire with, you know, a bow drill and all that kind of thing. It's very hard to be consistent with that. It's very hard to do it in the rain and things. This is your cheater stick. Super simple. Carry every day. Like these a lot. We get into our next group of lighters, which are your American-made Zippos. You know, Zippos are very popular. 
very reasonable. Now, this is one thing I do recommend if you're a big Zippo fan. This is basically a 30 millimeter um, bike tube that's been put over, which does make them very water resistant. You can drop them in a cup of water for you know 30, 40 seconds. You know, if you drop it in a puddle, it's not going to ruin your lighter, and it will work. These guys are really nice. They light up real nice. They do awesome in cold weather. Probably some of the best cold weather lighters out there. Um, they do have kind of a funky flame. There's no adjustment here. And it does, these usually need to be refilled about once a week. So, you know, just kind of keep that in mind. So what I plan on doing, you know, it puts it out, open it up type deal. This is something you want to keep in mind that you're going to be, you know, using on a trip. Lots of people carry these. You just got to maintain them. You got to keep up on your flints. You got to do things like that. One other thing I do recommend, there is no flint storage on these lighters, but if you pull it out on the bottom here where you open it up to put your fluid in, there's a little piece of felt. You lift up the felt and you put an extra flint in there and it doesn't hurt the flint at all to be next to the fluid. So that's easily done and that gives you a spare flint because they never fail. The flint always goes bad when you're in the middle of nowhere. Now the problem I do have with this guy is that it does take a screwdriver to change out the flint. So um, this is just a smaller guy. I like these a lot because they're very flat, very easy lighters to work on. But you'll see here on the bottom here, we've got this little screw right here is going to be for your flint. There's a spring in there. Be careful. That is under pressure. So when you back that out, be real careful. And then there's your standard felt here which if you lift up I always keep and I don't know if you guys can see it but there's an extra flint in there rolling around the bottom so I always keep an extra flint in there I love the felt idea it works real good keep in mind every time you open them to show somebody like that you really should top them back off again great idea nothing wrong with Zippo's and like I said, with the tube idea, they are fairly water resistant. My favorite lighters out of all of them are the Imco's. Imco is a company out of Austria that has been making, they basically started out with the very first lighters on the market. So they had basically three designs that I'd recommend for you. They make a trench lighter, which is fine, but... I don't recommend that. Um, it has it's a lot of moving parts that have to work all properly. It is very two-handed operated to open it, and they have their G11 lighters, which are butane lighters. The problem is this company has gone out of business, and you cannot get the canisters of butane anymore. So if you do see a G11 lighter on there, stay away from it. They are very hard to fill. You've got to kind of modify a system to make them work. There are some YouTube videos out there, so if you do have one on how to make that work. But I'm a big fan of liquid fueled lighters when you're going out into the woods to depend on them. Uh, these guys run on your most popular fuels, are going to be like your Zippo and Rosinol fuels. These are both basically the exact same thing. They will also run on your white gas and kerosene, um, and even some automotive ga gases in certain countries. So there's three basic versions that I recommend. This is the 6600 which is they call the Junior um, Triple Plex Lighters. You'll see on the bottom, it will say right on the metal can here, and this one is an original, and it is, uh, it'll say Triple Plex 66 Junior on here. Um, very popular lighters, very simple. My favorite out of the group, which is the 6700, which we'll talk a little bit about in a second, and the 6800. I really have drawn it back to these two lighters, and I'll tell you why. There's not really big difference in why I would pick one of these over the other. They're almost the same size. This one does have a flame adjustment on it. So this guy right here, as you pull down or push up, it lets more air in, less air in. And I'll show you that now. So you got a small flame. Open it up. It increases the flame. Push it in. Flame goes down. So to me, one of these... I would pick the 6700. This lighter is for you guys that like the Bix. Very similar in size of the Bic, holds more fluid and does one feature that the Bic can't even come close to, which is why I like the Imco lighters. One, very slim, 
It does not have the adjustment like the 6600. Not the biggest deal in the world to have the adjustment, but here's what I really do love about the Imco lighters. And that's I-M-C-O, Imco, out of Austria. So these particular guys, you're going to pop them. They light every single time if you buy a good quality one. They have the little cone right here, which actually does put them out if they need, you know, and uh, keeps them from leaking. You'll smell a lot of gas come out of your, uh, your lighters there. But this is the big deal. They pop out. And they allow you to use it like a match. So if I'm lighting a pipe or if I'm lighting a fire, lighting a stove, I have the ability to do that. And then you just blow it back out, pop it back in. Now, the one thing I don't like about that, as you saw, this is a little hard to get out because you're not twisting it. You're just pulling it. Okay, some of them are a little easier than others. And you want it fairly snug in there so it doesn't come out. But again, this little guy right here, what this does is it goes over top of that and keeps it from leaking fluid, which the Zippos don't, which is again why I recommend if you're carrying a Zippo to use that tube tire, bike tire style, you know, cover, and that does help with that and that does make it so they do last a couple weeks without having to be fueled back up. Probably even almost in to a certain point at just as good if not a little better than the, uh, the Imcos. But again, a lighter I don't like because it's a little hard to use one-handed. So you just shove this guy back in the bottom, close him back down, and really almost every time you're going to get it to fire every single time. Here's what I really like about this 6700. The 6700 fires up basically every single time if you get one made in Austria. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a second. Now, um, Imco is very popular for putting somebody else's name on their product. These are the newer one by Esbit. They come in these orange boxes here. You'll see them. They're really easy to find on YouTube or on uh, eBay. Don't completely agree, you know, find these, but you want to stay away from the ones that are made in China or ones that even guarantee that they are from, you know, Austria and they're made from China. The biggest difference you're going to see here is in the compartment that holds the flints. Now this has got a really great system on how to do your flints. And then you're gonna have to look really close here. Basically you have a hole right here on the top. When you pull back, opens up a little channel, and that's where your flint, as you see it popped right down there. It also holds a spare flint right here. So those two areas right there work really, really good. The other thing you're going to see here is it says Imco Pat on there right there. So Imco Patent. You will not see this on your fake ones. Okay, so your China made ones. So if you're seeing somebody on Craigslist or something that says guaranteed, make sure that you can see that in the picture. It's not real if it's not. Now saying that, the Chinese ones, like this one right here, and I'll show you guys here, you usually see the, the five stars across the back. This is their most popular one that they've reproduced. You'll see a true one, an actual antique one, go for about 40, 50 bucks sometimes online, mattering on the shape. 30 to 40, 30 to 50 bucks. Your cheap Chinese ones that will be coming directly from China, usually give you free shipping, you'll pay about $11. Not the worst lighter in the world. One, they tend not to work as well. You'll notice there's not a lot of a flame adjustment here. It kind of angles out a little bit more, but it's not really increasing. Not the end of the world. Like I said, if you're dealing with these two, fairly similar. This guy was a lot more money because it is an original guy. One thing I wanted, I bought this for, I wanted to see what one would look like beat up for 50 years. And this is about 50 years old. This guy here, if you open it up inside... Very similar internal workings because they copied it very, very well. You'll notice the hole for the second flint doesn't have a flint in there. And I always carry flints in these if I can get them. Problem with this one is it does not fit. It is too small to fit a flint in there. So I wasn't able to put a flint in there. The other thing you'll notice is that your flint cover right here does not have Imco Pat on it. That's a sign that this is not. Now, you'll look online and you'll see them. 
they will not have that patent number on there again just like the original ones but it it's a still a halfway decent lighter for 12 bucks you're not a bad lighter at all same idea you're opening up here I do like the 6700 because like I said it is a twistable lighter so it means you can twist it and it comes out really easy but it stays in really nice and tight back to our original and as you can see I mean almost identical lighters very 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 similar the standard one works way better in the cold weather this one still lights just fine and with good flint and a good wick you know you can always replace your wicks with like a Zippo wick or an Imco wick if you're willing to buy them online and you want to do this right away because these guys are going up in price this uh, these guys we get out of South Korea they are made they're um, back stock from Esbit and usually get these I've been getting these out of South Korea they're very 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 nice lighters from the original company you'll see they have all kinds of different names they put on all their lighters um, you're gonna see these guys um, so kinda there keep in mind these guys are run on white gas kerosene all those kinda things and then we have their sparkers these guys here this is something I recommend instead of carrying your stupid little you know lighters you know the push button clicker lighters these are sparkers okay this is what we used for years before this idea they have an extra storage for flints in the back they carry flints and they're adjustable in the front these are also made in, Aust in Austria you want to make sure you're buying them in that you know from that era these go online from anywhere from about twenty to fifty dollars mattering where you're getting them and they're well worth it in my opinion one because I use white gas stoves in the wintertime and my white gas stoves during the summertime in my Coleman two burner stoves these work amazing for that your standard lighters don't work very well in the wind they always run out and they never seem to want to light long enough for you to light your stove which I hate this always works it works very very well and it works for white gas and your standard propane type fuels even at home so the power goes out works just fine this is one that's 60 years old and it still works like the day I bought you know it still works great so definitely something I'd recommend getting especially if you're using the MSR stoves things like that so just kinda keep that in mind you're really gonna want this is where I'd, I'd really stick with keep in mind you want to make sure that you're looking for these ideas these I've not seen faked I have seen these guys all over the place again not a bad lighter for this but for twenty dollars you get the original one and you get the brand new one from Esbit that fires up every single time these are incredibly wind resistant and you know you'll get the so your basic five mile an hour winds type deal work very very well they will blow out they are not true windproof lighters same thing with your zippos if you're pretending now the great thing like I said if you're a white gas stove person definitely get one of these because this you can put white gas in if your fluid runs out when you're going I always recommend fueling them up once a week the way you do it you take them out you're gonna pop your guy apart you're going to fill up here very easily until you get drips out the bottom when you get drips out the bottom it is full and ready to be used and you go ahead and stick it right back in and you're all ready to go so really simple to work on really easy to do no tools required when you're in the woods runs on your same fuel as your regular you know you can use white gas kerosene and your actual Zippo lighter fluid so this is the black bear prepper if you guys have any questions feel free to make comments we always love to see if you guys like our videos or make comments if you have any other information that maybe I didn't describe for or you want to ask a question that maybe you want us to talk about in a future video please put them in there that really helps us know what you guys want to learn about so as always this is a black bear prepper have a great day